Hello, hello, it's Stumpflet here. Here's an item on geometry. The figure is a square, as you can see. Find the area of the green region. All right, so this part's one. And then we do have uh, some uh, marks here to indicate that the, um, this segment is equal to this segment, and then this segment is equal to this segment, and we do have a right angle here. So find the area of the green shaded region. Credits to the Philippine Mathematical Olympiad for this item. As usual, Pause this video if you'd like to give this item a try. But if you're done, let us dive into the solution. Now, um, as mentioned in the statement, or the question statement, the figure is a square. So, well, we do have the side length of the square. And we do have a right angle here, and I believe we could use it to our advantage because maybe a Pythagorean uh, is to be applied here. Because of the nice properties of the square, we do have a lot of right angles. And additionally, we do have this right angle here. So maybe Pythagorean is the thing that we're going to do. Now, um, with the length of one, one here, I could uh, write the other segments, for example, this one. I could write this part as uh, S minus one because it's the entire segment uh, minus this uh, part of one. So that part is going to be S minus one. Now, let's take a look at um, this portion, um, the perpendicular part, and well, this point over here, label it as in blue, it is the midpoint of uh, this segment over here. Okay, so um, might be obvious to some, but might not be obvious to some, but I'm going to uh, draw out this triangle over here. Now, essentially this part, uh, this part in the middle, it is essentially the altitude of uh, that red triangle that I highlighted, and this altitude is also a perpendicular bisector, or a median, sorry. So it is also a median. So because of symmetry and stuff, we can say that this red triangle, it must be isosceles. So um, since we do have a, we, have, we do have an altitude to this side, uh, the two sides that are congruent would be uh, this one and this one. Okay. So um, those two uh, red segments with three uh, with three ticks, those will be the same. So I think I can say that well, whatever this length like is, I could use it here. And well, take a look at this one. We do have uh, two marks here. So I know that, well, the entire thing is S, so I will divide it into two. So I would know that this portion, this portion would be S, oops, sorry. This portion would be S over two. And obviously this one as well. Now, uh, what's important about this is that I can use uh, the Pythagorean theorem now in this right triangle. Now, obviously we have a square here. So obviously this angle should be right. Now, the hypotenuse, essentially I could use this portion, right? I could use that. So take a look. I'm going to form the Pythagorean theorem. So S minus one. So S minus one squared plus uh, S over two squared. And that should be equal to the square of this part. Well, the square of this part is just equal to this one, right? Uh, the square of this one. And we do have another right triangle here. So the top right, the top, uh, the top part over here is also a right triangle. And I could use a Pythagorean theorem, uh, theorem there as well because this is essentially the square of the hypotenuse here. So this should be equal to um, the two legs, one squared and s squared. So essentially, I have an equation for s, and I'll, well, I'll just have to solve for s here. Okay. So I have this equation. Let's try to solve for s. So we're gonna have s squared over four plus s squared minus 2s plus 1. That's going to be equal to s squared plus 1. Uh, the s squared cancels out. The 1 cancels out. Pretty good. So uh, we're going to have s squared over 4 equals 2s. So s squared is equal to 8s. Now s equals 0 technically works, but we're pretty sure that the side can't be 0 anyways, because if the side was 0, nothing would make sense in the question. So let's divide both sides by s. s is not 0, so we could do that. s would be equal to 8. Good. So we do have S equals 8. Going back to the figure, uh, we have the side length to be 8. Now, uh, the green shaded region, I'm going to split it by that red segment over there. The reason why I want to do that is because I realized that the shaded region is just a combination of two right triangles. Now, two right triangles, be oh, sorry, yeah, two right triangles because, well, obviously this right angle comes from the fact that we do have a square and this is going to be a right angle because of the given right angle here. Now, 
uh, the first triangle is A, which is a little bit easier to get because we already do have the two legs. So A will just simply be equal to one half, the product of the two legs. So one half times one times eight, A would just have an area of four. That's done. Now for the, more, for the more difficult part, it's gonna be B. But we could always use the fact that we do have an isosceles triangle that we formed a while ago, and we could use that to our advantage because uh, this altitude, oops, sorry, this altitude essentially serves as the axis of symmetry in that uh, isosceles triangle. Now, in fact, this region would also have an area of B, and that's pretty good because we're, we're going to do what we're going to do here to get the area of B. I can get the entire area of the square. That's going to be sixty-four, and I always have to subtract A, right? Which I know it was four based from the previous part. So I'm going to subtract the area of A. So the area of A is 4. And then take a look. I know that the side length is 8, so I could do the following. So um, this portion would also be 8. This side is 8. And then I know this part is a 4. This part is a 4, and this part must be a 7. So I know that. Okay, I'm going to consider the this triangle first. So the left-right triangle. Um, the legs are 4 and 7. So 1 half times 7 times 4. That's going to be... Uh, 14, so minus 14 in the left right triangle. And on the right triangle, I'm just going to subtract another 1 half times 4 times 8. That's going to be a minus 16. And right, this entire square minus the A, minus this right triangle, and minus this right triangle, this should give me 2B. Because, well, the B here and the B here, they have the same area. So whatever this thing is, that should equal 2B. So 64 minus 4 minus 14 minus 16. Uh, this is going to give you 30. Right? This gives you 30. So 30 equals 2B. So obviously divide both sides by 2. B would be 15. And we're done. We do have area. So we, have, we have the two triangles. Uh, region A has area 4. Region B has area 15. So take the sum of the two. The green shaded region would have an area of 19. And this will be our final answer. Hopefully you guys learned something new from this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.